Welcome to the 10th part of the tutorial series on how to make tic-tac-toe game in Unity. At first glance, it's difficult to know whose turn it is to play. To show whose turn it is, we will create a small panel with an X and an O that will change color, indicating the current player. Create a UI panel element in the scene by using Create UI Panel. With the panel game object selected, rename the game object player X. Reset the rect transform using the context sensitive gear menu. Drag the panel to minus 206, 330. It's worth noting that, if we've accurately followed the tutorial so far, the rect transform position minus 206, 330 should line up with the edge of the board panel and align with our restart button. With the player X game object selected, Set the color to vary DAR blue, 33, 44, 55, 255, using the preset. Add a UI text element as a child. Note, it's best to use the context menu by right clicking while the player X game object is selected and selecting UI text. It is also worth noting how easily we can add to and modify our UI elements by adding new UI elements as children. Select the text game object that is a child of the player X game object. With this text game object selected, set the anchor, pivot and position to stretch. Set the text property to X. Set the font size to 86. Set the alignment to middle slash center. Set the color to blue, 0, 204, 204, 255, using the preset. Duplicate the player X game object. Select the player X, 1, game object and rename it player O. With the player O game object selected, change the rect transform position X to 206, not minus 206. Set the text property to O. We are setting both of the player panels to the same dark color scheme with a dark blue background and blue text as we will modify the current active panel to a new, brighter color scheme in code. At this point, X is the default starting side. We could have set the player panel for X to the brighter color scheme to start with, but we will see further on in this lesson that this could limit our possibilities, especially if we let the player choose their starting side. To make things easier on ourselves, at this stage it might be best to describe the player display in a generic way that we can use in our game controller script. We can do this by creating a class that holds all of the relevant details for our player display. This player class will hold the definition of the player icon panel, including the background and text. Open the game controller script for editing. At the top of the script, under the namespace definitions but before the game controller class definition, create a new public class called player. In player, Define a new public image variable called panel. Define a new public text variable called text. Public class player public image panel, public text text. We will also need to alternate between an active color scheme and an inactive color scheme. These could be set up directly in the game controller script, but, as we have done with the player class, it might be tidier to define our color schemes in a similar way by creating a player color class. At the top of the script, under the namespace definitions but before the game controller class definition, create a new public class called player color. In player color, define a new public color variable called panel color. Define a new public color variable called text color. Public class player color public color panel color public color text color. At this point these two classes will not be visible in the inspector window even if we include an instance of them in our script. We will need these visible in the inspector so we can set their properties in an easy manner. For these two classes to be visible in the inspector, they need to be serialized by Unity. We can serialize these classes by using the system.serializable attribute. In the body of the game controller class, we will need two new instances of player and two new instances of player color. Define a new public player variable called player x. 
Define a new public player variable called player O. Define a new public player color variable called active a player color. Define a new public player color variable called inactive a player color. Public player player X. Public player player O. Public player color active a player color. Public player color inactive a player color. At this stage, it's best to check that everything is working and the serialization has been set up correctly. Save the script. Return to Unity. We should now see player X, player O, active player color and inactive player color in the inspector window. Let's set up the two player properties and the two player color properties while we are here in the Unity editor. Select the game controller game oboit. With the game controller selected, Open the drop-down for Player X. Assign the Player X panel property to the Player X game object. Assign the Player X text property to the text game object associated with the Player X game object. With the game controller selected, open the drop-down for Player O. Assign the Player O panel property to the Player O game object. Assign the Player O text property to the text game object associated with the Player O game object. Open the active player color drop down. Set the panel color to blue, 0, 204, 204, 255, using the preset. Set the text color to pink, 255, 0, 102, 255, using the preset. Open the inactive player color drop down. Set the panel color to very dark blue. 33, 44, 55, 255, using the preset. Set the text color to blue, 0, 204, 204, 255, using the preset. Now we have an easy and clear definition of both of our player panels and our player colors in the inspector. There are a few advantages to this approach over simply declaring all of these 8 properties in the game controller script directly. First, it organizes our code, like with like. The player and player color are defined by the same properties, so they each share a class. By having an instance of a class in our script, the properties of that class show up as sub-properties in the inspector with a collapsible container. This means we can group our properties in a way that is clearly organized in the inspector window and we can collapse the drop-down view in the inspector, hiding the bulk of properties after we have defined if we don't need them visible. This is this inspector window with all of the elements open. And this is the same inspector window with all of the elements closed. The next big advantage we get is control over our code when we try to manipulate these properties in our script. As we have defined our player as a class with properties, we can pass the entire player around as a single unit, rather than trying to pass the individual properties themselves. We will see this more clearly as we begin to set up the code we need to set the colors on these panels. Open the game controller script for editing. To set the colors of the, the panels we will create a new generic function that will change the colors of the player panels when we change sides. Create a new function that returns void called set player colors that has two player parameters called new player and old player. Void set player colors player new player, player old player. In the set player colors function. Set the new player's colors to the active color. Set the old player's colors to the inactive color. New player dot panel dot color equals active player color dot panel color. New player dot text dot color equals active player color dot text color. Old player dot panel dot color equals inactive player color dot panel color. Old player dot text dot color equals inactive player color dot text color. It is worth noting here that we are sending the entire player definition to set player color as an argument and then assigning values to the sub properties based on the player passed to the function. If we had not defined the player and player color in their own classes, we would have had more complicated code. In the very least, the signature of the function would have required each of the properties as a separate parameter such as set player colors, image new player image, text new player text, image old player image, text old player text. 
Our current style is much more efficient and far easier to read and understand. This is the generic functional code that will set the colors on the player panels. It simply assigns colors to the players in the order we send them. It will need to be called every time we change sides. To do that, we will need to add code to the function change sides that will send the new player and the old player to set player color depending upon whose turn it is, where if the player side is X we send player X and player O in that order, or else we send player O and player X. This is because if, in change sides, our player side is X, then player X is the new player and O is the old player, and vice versa. In the change sides function, add an if else statement, where the logic checks if player side is x. If, player side equals equals x. Else. In the change sides function. When the if is true, call set player colors with player x as the new player. Set player colors, player x, player o. In the change sides function. When the if is false, in the else block, call set player colors with player o as the new player. Set player colors, player O, player X. We now need to set the color scheme for the starting side to the active a player color. At this point, X is the starting side by default, so we can simply set the player panel for X as the new player. In a wick, add a call to set player colors with player X as the new player. Set player colors, player X, player O. Lastly, when we restart the game, we want to set X to have the active player color. In restart game, add a call to set player colors with player X as the new player. Set player colors, player X, player O. Save the script. Return to Unity. Enter play mode. Test by clicking any of the spaces. When we enter play mode, we should see the X panel highlight with the bright color scheme indicating that X is the current player. When we click on a space, the space should be assigned to X, and the O panel should now have the bright color scheme. When a game is complete, either a win or a draw, the restart button should appear. There is a little glitch, however. Dare we say a bug. When one player wins, the other side's panel gets highlighted. Even though X wins, the O panel is highlighted. This is a small issue, but, as we discussed earlier, we are in the Polish phase for this project and we need everything as perfect as possible. Why is this happening? Let's look at the code. Open the game controller script for editing. If we look at the end turn function, we will see that all of the code is being executed every time the function is being called. What's happening here is that after incrementing the move count, the function is checking every if statement and then at the end of the function, the function is calling change sides. We only want to call change sides if the, the game is not over, not every time we end a turn. One of the simplest solutions to this issue is to change these individual if statements into a single series of if slash else ifs. This way we won't have to check every line of code if one of the earlier lines tests true. This also means we can leave the last line of code as a simple else, so we will only call change sides if there is no win nor a draw. In end turn, leave the first if unchanged. Change all of the remaining ifs to else if, including the test on move count. Before change sides, add an else. With this logic, we check all of the possible win conditions. If one of the win conditions tests true, we call game over and get our of the if else logic. If none of the win conditional prove true, including a draw, we then change sides. Save the script. Return to Unity. Enter play mode. Test by clicking any of the spaces. Now when we enter play mode, 
we should see the X panel highlight with a bright color scheme indicating that X is the current player. When we click on a space, the space should be assigned to X, and the O panel should now have the bright color scheme. When a game is complete, either a win or a draw, the restart button should appear. Now, however, when one player wins, the their sides panel stays highlighted. In the next lesson we will explore how to choose either X or O as the starting side.